I think by now most people are aware that uh, as uh, Mike Wolf, I believe he was one of the first ones to announce it to the Access community at least, that Microsoft was going to be killing off VBScript. Um, long story short, uh, and as you can see on the screen, I have an article with a link to his original article. Um, they're going to be first switching it to a feature on demand, which means it won't be installed by default and that you're going to have to go out of your way and select that option and install it yourself. But at a certain point, it's from my understanding, at least it simply will no longer be available. Now the implications can be quite extensive because unbeknownst to most people, VBScript isn't just what we conceptually conceive of when we're creating a, a script file. It actually holds the libraries for things like the file system object, uh, regular expressions, and others. So the implication that VBScript is going away isn't just, oh, I won't be able to create a VBScript file. It's It actually may impact programming our abilities to do things significantly. Making things worse in all of this is Microsoft remaining mute in this entire conversation. Uh, people have asked and asked and asked for clarification. Are we losing FSO? Are we losing regex? What exactly, which libraries are going to be deprecated or switched on to feature on demand only? Uh, we all know, especially in corporate environments, feature on demand is not something that is easy normally to get installed. So we have to plan for simple default installations in which they won't be available to us. This brought me to today's subject matter. And, you know, we can wait until we're blue in the face holding our breath here, hoping that Microsoft will one day wake up and actually answer our question as to what is the implication of the end of EB script? You know, please give us details. Um, and as I've learned over the years is Microsoft doesn't always communicate back. Other times they're very responsive. So uh, anyway, they certainly haven't been in this case. We can always hope that they will in the near future. But up until now, we still are waiting to find out the details. I'm not a person that likes to just wait here hoping for the best. And as such, I decided to take a look at what options do we have when it comes to regular expressions. So basically today's discussion, because I use regex significantly, um, it depends on the situations, but it's just a very powerful tool. It's often underutilized in the VBA world. Um, regex is extensively used in web development and there's a reason for it. And as such, I, over the years, have become more and more of a user of regex. When I first started off, I never even, well, I hadn't even heard of regex, let alone used it. But as I found how powerful it is and how easy it is to implement, I have started using it for validation, for data extraction. It's just a very powerful tool. And as such, because I use it, I am concerned about that aspect of the implication of the death of VB script. Because then you get into, okay, well, then now I've got to create other routines to do it in other techniques, different approaches. Um, some might be possible, some might not. And so I would just wanted to see before having to reinvent the wheel completely, is regex truly dead? And well, with a little bit of effort on my behalf, I managed to find out that effectively, no, even if VB script does go away, perhaps regex isn't truly dead. And that's what I just wanted to present briefly today. I'm not going to go into uh, all the details here. All of it is on the, the website. You can come here and see all the code is here and available to you. So you'll see what I've done. I have links to some sources and stuff like that. But I just wanted to illustrate that so far, I have found possibly two approaches, and there are others, okay? Because I know we could go through a web browser control, okay? Because web browser controls allow JavaScript, we could go through a uh, web browser control, run a JavaScript through that, and get back our, our values, because web browser controls support regex. Now, 
I didn't want to do that because that means, well, we've got to now have, let's say, a form with the web browser control in it and everything that that implies. And I didn't want to have to have extra objects um, floating around if we didn't need to. And as I found, we don't necessarily need to. So I was trying to find a simple plug and play, possibly a re simple replacement. So I've got functions that use regex. I just have to change the name of the function and now it will work, but without the VB script library. So let's just very quickly, I'm just going to open up a sample database that I have for regex. Let me bring it over here so you can actually see it. And we can take a look at any example. It really doesn't make a difference. But as you can see here, uh, for validation, and that's what I'm talking about here right now, validation. So just checking if the input conforms to what you want. So in this case, this is a very simple example of validating if what was entered is a valid email address. And it's always the same principle. You're going to come, you're going to create a regex object. You're going to define the pattern that you're expecting, so the rule that it has to conform to, and then you're going to test your input string. So whatever you want to validate, it's going to validate against that pattern that you've established. So it's always the same thing. And basically, if it comes out, it will give you a Boolean whether based on the test, yes, it's true, it conformed, or false, it didn't. So that's what makes regex so powerful. Everything is based on the pattern. The pattern drives validation. The other thing that it can do is it can even do things like replace. I had an article not very long ago about uh, this where I'm using regex again with a simple pattern. You see how simple it is. Which goes and finds wherever there's multiple spaces and reduces it down to a single space. So it's a great way, as you can see here, I'm inputting this as a string, but I'm outputting just that. So all the extended spaces, the empty space, gets removed. So regex can do things like that. Regex can also go through a string and can extract data. Now, I'm not sure if this is the guy to do it. Uh, yeah, this was the one. Um, you can have a string and it will go through, it will find all the matches to the pattern that you've established. And for each match that it identifies, you then choose to do something. So what I chose is I'm building up a string, comma, delimited string of those values. So then I can do whatever I want, split it. As you see here, I'm splitting it into an array. So I'm returning an array of email addresses extracted from a larger text. You can use it for anything, phone numbers, serial numbers. You, you know, the, there is no limit to what regex can do. It's always the same thing. It's coming down and defining these patterns. Now, a lot of people have asked me about these patterns. Where do I get them? How do I come up with them? There are websites dedicated to this. I have many of them in my articles on my blog. But basically, before trying to reinvent the wheel here and creating your own regex, which you can do once you understand the basics, but go out on Google, on Bing, or whatever you use, and just do a search for a reg regex email address, regex phone number, regex, and you will find tons and tons and tons of patterns that have been developed by other developers in the past. Try them out. You know, most of the time they're pretty darn good. And even if they aren't 100% what you need, they are going to be a massive leap forward in your development that you can then tweak. Now, as you can see, what I've just shown you, just giving you a little slight flavor as to what regex is and does, is that it's all dependent here on the VB script library. And this is the guy that's going away or possibly going away. So what alternatives do we have? Well, basically at the end of the day, like I said, a lot of this has been available to us uh, in the web development world. So I started thinking a little bit about that. And I remembered that, well, a couple of years ago, I did some work with the script control and it allowed me to run JavaScript. And I used it to do some um, encoding, decoding, and things like that. 
So that got me on to the path of using the script control. And that's what I did. So this was the original function I started playing around with. But if we just scroll down a little bit, you'll see here, I developed this guy here. So I developed a singular function, which does a validation of a URL. And it's always the same idea. Like I said, you have to pass it a pattern. So that's what I'm doing here. Here's the pattern. And then we go on and we use the pattern to perform the test of the URL. The difference, however, is up here slightly, is we're no longer using the VB script regex library. We're using the script control library. Now, I'm just hoping that this is not part of the VB script larger library because it is actually part of the MS script control ActiveX. Um, so I, I'm hoping that this is not being touched by the deprecation of VB script. Even if it is, I have a secondary option available to us, but let's keep going on here. Now, so I made this originally and it works just fine. You can test out whatever you'd like. If we just take a quick look, you can come in here, do uh, google.com, let's say, and it returns true. So it is a valid URL. And if you omit that last period, you'll see it comes back as false. Now, the problem with the above, if we look at it, is that, you know, making these one-off functions, well, yes, it's intuitive, you know what you're at, but you're going to have to create one for every single case that you want to visit. I want to validate a URL. I want to validate an, an email address. I want to validate a phone number. I want to, you know, so you can. You can go and basically copy-paste the function and simply change the pattern. But everything else always stays standard. Nothing's going to you know, vary in any of this code outside of the pattern. So that's where I came up with my other more universal solution. And it's just a regex validate. Okay. So in it, you're going to supply a pattern. You're going to supply the flag. We'll talk about that in just two seconds. And then you're going to pass it the input that you want to validate. So now... If you come here, as you can see, I did different options, different possibilities to achieve the same end game at the end of the day. So like everything in VBA, there's more than one way to do things. But if you come here and you look, we're going to assemble in runtime the pattern, the flag and your input, and it will spit out whether it's true or false. So now we have one function we can use and it can be used to validate anything. So we can use it to validate phone numbers. We can use it to validate URLs. We can use it for anything you want. There's no longer a limit and you don't have to create different functions for each one. All you have to do now is call this function. So let me just demonstrate. We can just copy uh, this guy here. Very simple. And that's why I put these in my function headers and you guys have examples of how it works. But basically we're calling our function, we're supplying it the pattern we want it to test against, we're supplying it the pattern flags, and then here is the actual string we want to validate. Oops, sorry, right here. So if we just test it quickly, you'll see it's true, just like the uh, function before it, and we get false. So it works just fine. Now, some people will say, well, this, this is tedious to have to copy this into code every single time. And they're not wrong. So the next solution that you can do, keep a general function like this that works perfectly. And now just come down and just create a small little simple wrapper function. And now we have basically hard coded the pattern specifically for, let's say, URLs. And now all we have to do is call this guy and only supply it with the, in this case, URL. Yeah. Right? So this is as simple as you can now get it. But we're simply using this general function that will work for all case scenarios. And then if you want, and you want to simplify how you use it, you can just create these little simple wrapper functions that keep utilizing it to simplify your life. And you don't always have to carry along the pattern and the pattern flags.
Now, pattern and pattern flags, what are they? If we look here, I'm going to take this guy here for just one second. Let me go back to my browser. Let's open a new tab and take a look at what the flags are. You're probably already familiar with them because even in the VB script regex, we had to use them, or in a lot of cases, we use them. Here, let, let me just refresh your memory for two seconds. If you look, I believe, pretty much any example, um, no, I didn't do it here, but I do know uh, this one, I did do it. It's this stuff here. In, in certain cases, you will specify or set different properties, right? And you're going to say it's a global search or it's an ignore case search or it's a multi-line search. Um, so depending on what you are doing, sometimes you set these extra properties and those are what we call flags. So if you look, Mozilla's uh, help and support documentation is excellent for this type of stuff. But as you can see here, here are the advanced flags. So a global search, which we just saw two seconds ago, you put the letter G. If it's case insensitive, you put the letter M. If it's a multi-line, then you're going to use M. And you have other ones, as you can see, Unicode. That can be a very important one. So you use these guys and those are the flags and that's why if you look in the uh, vba when i call it all right remember here the pattern match and remember when we called it i did igm so ignore case it's global it's multi-line and if you look at the wrapper function i have a constant for my pattern flags that I'm passing to it and I've set them to IGM and depending on what you're testing the string you're testing it becomes more or less important so it depends on what you're inputting but I have found in most cases using the IGM really works really well but it depends on what you're trying to achieve as always so you have to understand a little bit about what these flags mean and do but in like 99% of the cases that I've had to deal with I'm always setting my patterns to IGM. Um, so just so you understand that. And if you go back here, uh, the page on regular expressions is quite extensive with all sorts of examples and explanations. So do take a look because like I'm using test, I'm using the match, etc. But like I said to you, you can go beyond that. Okay. There's exec, there's split, there's all sorts of nifty things you can do with regex. That's what I'm saying. It is so powerful. So that would be the validation. And that's really as complicated as it gets. It's that simple. Then I also wanted to explore looking at matching. So extracting data. So once again, I started with this example of I wanted to extract email addresses from a string. This actually came from a forum question I had had many years ago. So if we just very quickly look at what it does. So I've got this string and inside it are a couple email addresses and I wanted to be able to extract those. So I created this, which pulls out a comma separated listing of the email addresses. And then from there, I can do whatever I want. I can split them. I can use them like that. You know, the, the, taking it further, we all know how to do that. But the hard part is how do I get them out of the text? Like I said, regex is built for this. So it's very similar. We just come down here. You have the early binding at the top here and then the late binding here, depending on what you're wanting to use. But once again, we're using the Microscript script control script control. And we set the language to JavaScript and we add our code block that does the work. So our JavaScript function, our JavaScript function, this one is a slightly more complicated because we have to do an iteration over the matches. Okay. Versus the validation is just simply perform a test. That's it. But if you come here, we're building a new regex. Okay. Then I'm just declaring my output variable. I'm setting it to nothing. Then I perform that match. So it's going to take the input that we're passing to it. And it's going to apply a match based on the regular expression that we defined. So now we have our matches in this variable matches holds any matches it will have found. 
Now we're going to do a four, and we're going to iterate over all of the matches that were found, and we're going to build up our string of matches, adding our comma separation. Lastly, then I look at if my output has a value, then I'm going to remove the first two characters, which are going to be initially it would be a comma with an extra space because I'm starting it off that way. So it's just truncating off that extra comma and space that have no value. And then I return that output variable. And lastly, so here we've defined the function, but we still haven't used it. We come down here and I'm going here, run the function. So pattern test is what I had originally called it. And here is my input string that I'm passing to it to, to perform the extraction, find the matches and extract the data. It's going to return the values of that output to my S output from VBA, which I just pass as my output for my function. So that was the original. Now, once again, you'd have to do this for every case scenario that you could possibly have. So right now this is for email, email addresses. If you want to do URLs, you want to do serial numbers, whatever it is, doesn't make a difference. You'd be copy pasting, copy pasting every single time and changing the regex pattern, which is less than ideal. And it gets to be tedious. And then also if you find a bug in your code, now you've got to go update multiple functions. So I wanted to create a singular function that I could use like I did for the validation. So I created this JS regex underscore match. As you're going to see here now, instead of just passing it a string, I'm passing it a pattern. I'm passing it the flags. Then I'm passing it the string that I want to test. And lastly, I gave an optional that you can define and change the delimiter to be used. So if you don't want a comma with a space, you want a title, you want a pipe, whatever you want, you can now just simply supply that as an argument. It just makes the function more flexible. But the rest of it remains very similar. So we're using our early binding or late binding with the script control. We're defining the language. We build our function here. For debugging, I have the debug print here. You don't necessarily need it when you're actually using it, but it is useful to understand the function if ever you're having issues. If you get any weird errors, this is a great way you debug print it and you can put that into a plain uh, HTML file and then you can do some console testing that way. And sometimes it's a lot easier to debug and figure out where you've gone wrong. Um, and then we add the code to the uh, script control and we run it passing okay, we're, what we're running. We're running our pattern test. We which pattern, which pattern flag, the input and the delimiter. And we get back the output from that and we pass it back to our function. So now we have a function that will work with any pattern that you pass it to it. So for instance, here is an example of it in function working. You can come here, as I said, so we're passing it the pattern. We're passing it the pattern flags. We're passing it the string to test. And if we come here and we test it, it pulls out all three. Now, just for demonstration purposes, let's remove the global multi-line. Let's see how it differs, differs, should I say. Isn't that interesting how it no longer returns all of the matches? If we put back in the multi-line, it still doesn't. If we put in the global multi-line, now suddenly it works. So that's why I'm saying those flag pattern flags are actually very important to getting the result you're expecting. As with the validation function, the same thing occurs. It's tedious to always have to pass these two arguments every single time. And as such, it becomes useful or can be useful to uh, use a wrapper function. And here was two examples of using a wrapper function, depending on what you're wanting to achieve. So in this first one, as you can see here, we're going to come and we're going to pass it this string. So let's just come back up here. We're going to copy the same string for our demonstration. We will put it here and we run it and we get out 
as you can see, I changed the delimiter in this case to a double uh, pipe. So we get all three email addresses separated by a double pipe. Now, so that's returning it as a string. However, if we wanted, here was an illustration here, I created another one which returns it as a split. So it's going to return an array. So we can now use this guy if we wanted, and it will now run our command, which returns an array. And now we can iterate over the array and do something with each match that it found. In my case, I'm going to simply debug print them out to the immediate window. Oh, excuse me. That was an obvious mistake. And there you go. You iterated over all three return matches in the array and output them in the window. We could generate emails. We could do all sorts of things. But there you have it, just illustrating a little bit different ways of you, how you can handle this. You want to return it as a simple plain string. You want to return it as an array. And then in whatever calling function, process the array of returned um, elements. So that's the first approach using the script control. But I always worry, uh, maybe without reason, but I just don't like that word script in the word because they're retiring VB script. So I was just curious also if there was another approach. And the other approach that came to mind that I've used many times too was using the Microsoft HTML object library because it too allows us to uh, work with JavaScript. So I'll just show you very briefly here the same general idea. So I wanted to create a general function where we pass it a pattern, pattern flags, and the string to be tested. As you can see here, here we're using, I have once again the early binding, the late binding, but we're using the depends in early binding, they call it the MSHTML HTML document. And yet in the late binding, they call it an HTML file. But regardless, we create this and then here I'm clearing it because by default, I believe it puts a paragraph, a set of paragraph tags. And I just wanted to eliminate them to remove any, you know, superfluous uh, coding that would appear. So then I have to create a structure because I was unable, even though there was code that used to work that I could just run a function directly and get back and return the, the what it would return. Um, it no longer seems to work. I have a feeling they've done some security tightening on that, but I found another approach that worked. Uh, so what I'm doing now is I'm first creating, yes, a set of paragraph tags, but I'm specifically giving it an ID and I call it result. That will serve me later for grabbing the information because what I'm doing is then I'm creating my script, my VB script. Okay. And then I'm appending it. So I'm going to create a script element, a script tag, and in it, I'm going to place my function. And you're going to see it's this general same idea. We create a pattern, my input. Okay. But what differs here, since I couldn't seem to grab the, what it was returning directly is I'm going to tell it, go and set the element by ID result, which is right here. So that paragraph set its inner text. So what would appear in between the tags, set it to the result of that regex pattern test. So basically the true false. So it's going to test my input, but it's going to return it to my paragraph tag that I created here. Next I come and I tell it, okay, here we've created the paragraph tag. We've created our script tags. Everything's good. Here we come and tell it now run the function. So run regex pattern test, regex pattern test, run it. So it will run the test. It will output the result back to this paragraph tag. Now all we have to do is come here and read what is inside the inner text, which is what we passed. We passed it the result of the function. So, uh, or should I say of the regex test? So we're just going to go now read what the result was in the result paragraph tag. So it's a little more convoluted. Yes, but it works just the same. And we end up 
with a function that works just fine. And if we want to test it just for proof, you can come here. So we pass it the, the, the uh, pattern, we pass it the pattern flags, and then the string to be validated. So this is for URLs, and we test it and we get true. And if we make an error in our URL, it returns false. So it works just fine. So the same would apply here. I haven't done it, but you can easily create a wrapper function to simplify your life for the different cases that you're going to use regularly. Now I have started working on uh, MSMHTML version of finding matches, um, but I still have a slight bug that I'm working on that I need to perfect. Uh, but just know that it is also possible. So all of this is just to illustrate that even if VB script is killed, let's say even if it was tomorrow, which it isn't, we have alternatives available to us. And there's also the simple fact that if we really had to, uh, and we won't had to get rid of regex, which I hope we don't, but if it really wasn't possible any which way, they start closing every single avenue we have, then we can always get back to good old basic VBA with the left, right, mid, in string, in string, reverse, all those beautiful functions. And there are still ways of extracting the data. And there's also, don't forget, especially when I'm talking to Microsoft Access developers, there's also good old SQL. And you can use SQL to do all sorts of phenomenal things as well. So don't discount any of those other alternatives either. But this was just a short video just to prove to us that basically at the end of the day, yes, there are changes coming. And yes, I'm not entirely thrilled with them. Um, and I think some of this is very short-sighted and hasn't been well thought out and planned. Uh, and they certainly aren't communicating with the millions, if not billions of users that they have, that this will impact and this will impact pretty much everyone because VB script is used so extensively everywhere, even in simple things like installers for programs. So this is everywhere. People just don't realize it and they need to communicate. So we truly know the extent of the impact this is going to have, but know that there are alternatives. And as you'll see here on my article, I provide you with some of these alternatives that you can take, you can use and uh, get around maybe this hurdle, which is of regex. Now, um, I should uh, mention here very quickly, if you get into any of this development, especially if you are an experienced web developer with JavaScript, what you have through VBA is a primitive version. So a lot of the newer things that we've learned and use regularly will not work. And you're going to get all sorts of absurd errors. You're going to get errors like this, where it's expected semicolon, expected bracket. And it has nothing to do with it. There is nothing wrong with your code. You are not missing a semicolon. You are not missing closing brackets, etc. It is just the way that it is spitting out convoluted errors because it didn't actually accept something much higher up in your code. Typically what I've found in my experience is uh, if you were used to using double slashes for comments, it doesn't allow it. You have to use the slash with the star. Um, and it also doesn't accept any of the more recent declarations, let, constant, etc. You have to simply declare everything as a var. Um, so you have to take a step back a decade or two in your coding approach. But as long as you do that, in general, it works. I am seeing some weird behaviors with the MSHTML library, and that's why I still don't have a functional match routine yet, but I will get it resolved. And when I do, I will post here with the results and hopefully others can gain from some of my uh, time wasted fighting Microsoft's uh, implementation of JavaScript through MSHTML, because it does seem to be a little peculiar. And later in the article, I provide that uh, regex validate functions and you can take a look. And I also going to mention here, this is a great opportunity because these are often validation routines are used a lot. We're going to use it on every record and in some cases it may be used in a query and things like that. Don't discount using self-healing object variables here. It really can have a significant impact on overall performance. So keep that in mind. 
Um, I also mentioned here, like I said, this isn't necessarily the end of regex either because we do have other options available to us. Like I said, we have the web browser controls that we could possibly exploit. And there's always, never forget, we could push it out to uh, using PowerShell and using regex through PowerShell. It's slower, so it's not my first choice. But if it was my last resort, it is a very powerful uh, tool at our disposal and it will work equally. And then I have a link here, like I said, to the article here on the uh, web docs from uh, Mozilla MDN. Uh, worth reading, especially if you're not familiar with regex, great source of information. So I'm going to stop here. I've talked enough. I've demonstrated enough. I hope you see a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to the deprecation of VBScript with regards to regex. If regex is not dead, we have options available to us. As for the file system object, that's a whole other can of worms. I'm going to explore that a little bit, but that's a doozy to try to replace because it is so versatile. It has so many capabilities. Finding a way of replicating all of that is going to be, well, in my opinion, impossible. Is it possible to replicate certain aspects of it? Yes. But there are definitely certain things that I'm scratching my head as to what we can possibly do. So will Microsoft break off a separate DLL just to give us that? Uh, or are we screwed, as they say? I don't know. Uh, time will tell. And let's just pray that Microsoft starts talking a little bit and giving us some information. Anyway, enough on that. Uh, wishing you all a great day, and I will see you in the next video. As always, please like, share, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. And if you're able to promote any of my content, videos, articles on my blog, please do so. It is greatly appreciated. Have a great day, everyone, and we'll see you in the next one.